Yes, Hickok 45, your internet shooting companion. Coming to you from the beautiful hills, I'll say, of Tennessee. Yes, Tennessee, the home of who else on the week of Veterans Day? Alvin York, right? Alvin York from Tennessee. So glad you're here. It's a pretty nice day. It's a little chilly, but really not much at all. So we can't complain, right? Not bad, not bad. You see what I'm shooting here is a Mark III, right? Yeah, the Browning uh, VAR bar. So pretty cool. This is the newer version of them that I really wasn't as familiar with. Just saw it somewhere. Mm. Had one of these one time, owned one back before YouTube days and let it get away. So I'll tell you a little bit about that. But yeah, I've got a newer one now. That's pretty neat. That's pretty cool rifle so far, I have to say. So yeah, we're here and we're happy to be here and uh, appreciate uh, Bud's Gun Shop, a uh, longtime supporter, just like YouTube. They're as close as your computer or your cell phone. Right, they go wherever you are. So great outfit. And the Silencer Central, same thing. Uh, you, wonderful company and, and people. And you have seen uh, the Banished line up here uh, often. Yeah, great stuff. And then the Sonoran Desert Institute, great place for some uh, learning, some additional learning, put it that way. Education from a distance. Yeah, uh, drone technology, uh, firearms technology, you name it check out their coursework and look what they have to offer so look what i have to offer a pretty cool rifle yeah uh really so it, it is and uh, i'm looking forward to shooting it some more i sighted it in uh yesterday put a scope on it you have to put something on them i know sometimes you see me with a, an optic you wonder what's wrong with me because uh i'm uh, kind of known as the non-optic guy, maybe formerly known as Prince, I don't know. Uh, I, I like iron sights. I like some optics okay on long guns. I'm more likely, well, I am, <laughs> no doubt about it. Uh, more likely is not actually very accurate as I just typically do not really ever put an optic on a handgun, but on a shotgun or a rifle, pistol caliber carbine and all those sorts of things. Uh, yeah, they're fine, kind of like a red dot. I wish I could see a red dot better. I, I wish it was a, a clearer picture. Uh, I've gone to the prism uh, sites as y'all recommended and uh, they're better, much better. I can't find a reticle I like. They're kind of weird too, uh, but not as weird as a red dot on my eye. Of course, a scope like this, uh, Maybe that's just what I need to do. Just put a, tele, a weak power telescopic sight on uh, carbines and everywhere I've got a prism scope or a sight or a red dot, just, you know, I don't know, an inexpensive, but a, well, not too inexpensive, but as small as I can get, just a really nice clear uh, scope. Uh, what, two, three, four power or something. Maybe that's what I should, should do. A lot of helicopter copter activity today. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll tell you a little bit about the history. Me and the uh, the BAR or the BAR. How do you say it? Uh, I know the military version. I think everybody calls it the BAR, right? The old one from 1917, 18. And then when they came out with this, I think it was his grandson. Uh, Browning's grandson in uh, about 66, 67, long in there, 50 years, 50 years later. Uh, you've still got the bar, B-A-R, but I, I do hear people calling it a bar. I never called it a bar. I, I just, it, the implications of uh, shooting and drinking, that combination just doesn't, doesn't sound right, right? So anyway, uh, before I get into that, I appreciate all the condolences on the slam fire. A lot of you, of course, understand, all right? You understand. Uh, he was not just a cat or just a dog and that kind of thing. Many of you who have lost pets fully understand how tough that is. And you too have lost family members, humans, brothers, sisters, parents, grandparents. And you, you know the difference, but... Uh, you know, at the time, 
It's, both are extremely powerful, aren't they? Yeah, like last week I was kind of in a daze. Just like it, it's like there were, you know when it, things happen that day, you know you just kind of motor on. It hits you later more, but it's just a weird, weird thing. And uh, and the, the the thing is like when when you lose people, even if they live a thousand miles away, you see them twice a year. It's just the most powerful thing to lose a family member or whatever, and it's devastating and and everything. And uh, with a pet, of course, you see it more often. It's around all the time, and that's the problem with uh, with slam fire that turkey. He was such a you saw him, and you know I linked to one of those videos he was in. And you've seen seen him around. He's just such a lovable bird and so cute. He's just too cute for school, you know, fluffy and. And uh, and soft and, and and lovable, you know, friendly. We called him Mr. Friendly, you know, often. And he was always in my lap or my wife's lap. And he uh, he was just a a character, always around. And that that was that's the thing. Uh, it you know, it's been almost a week, and I uh, you know, I mean, you can't get around it. Like he was uh, always in the window, looking in, jumped up in the swing or up on a pedestal to let me know he wanted in if I'm there working at my desk, my my area, my office. At, I'd get up probably five times a day and let him in, and, uh, and then half time he'd end up on my lap, but other times not. And then he'd want out later, come back over around after he had something to eat and drink, and come back, sit and look at the doorknob. Okay, I'm ready to go back out. And you know, and so you're always managing him and, and uh, doing something with him. And, Every time I go out on the porch, you know, there he is, either sleeping or coming over to see you, or I come up the stairs, the back stairs on the deck. Uh, you got a railing there, and the stairs come up parallel to that, and, and you can grab the railing if you want to. Well, when he was like about that big, when we first showed up here, he was a drop off or something. He was just really a little guy, and uh, 11 years ago. and. And he would be there at that rail as I would come up at kind of my eye level, and I'd reach in there and pick on him, play with him, you know, and I, like my fingers were a mouse under the railing or banister, and in between the banisters, he'd paw at me and paw at me. And uh, that was just kind of a routine. And then he never did forget that in 11 years. Now he got to where he was older, he wouldn't come over and just well, always want to play and paw at me. Uh, he, but he, he'd come over even, you know, just a few days ago, you know, he was doing that. He came, I'd see him as I'm coming up, he'd hear me coming up the stairs outside and he'd be over there and he'd plop down, he'd come walking over there and kind of rub up against that banister, knowing I'm gonna reach through and pet him, you know, we're not gonna get into a big playful thing maybe, but he just, that was just his whole life, you know. And so it's things like that, you can't, he'd come into the shed where I reload and get up on a stool and sit there and lie there and all that kind of thing, just always around. And so, so you can't go anywhere, can't walk into any room or outside the house or back into the house, you know, you know, without him coming to mind because he was just always there or you're looking for, for where he is, you know, that kind of thing. And he'd come in at night around nine, eight to nine o'clock, he was outside and uh, he'd go down to the basement for the night. So, and then every morning you know, get up, you know, refill his water upstairs first thing, and open the basement door, let him, him and Boo Boo were both up, you know, and, and uh, he would come running out sometimes, but then he would stay there at the door because Boo Boo, a <laughs> female, would be behind him down there. And he would just sit there, and keep her from coming up, you know, just messing with her, not in a mean way. You know, but it was just everything you do, everywhere you go, you know, the, it was a party. It wasn't like I'd just see him occasionally, especially since I've not been uh, teaching for, what, 13, 14 years now. Well, no, no, since 2013. And uh, so I'm always around, you know, with him. So, so it's especially hard uh, for that reason. I'll, I'll never, you know, get used to him not being around the big Turk. So anyway, appreciate all the thoughts on that. And so, so many of you've gone through the same, same thing. And uh, I've learned to get along without that pretty boring. Uh, not easy. Also, I want to thank Alabama Holster for their support of the channel. Uh, great great little kydex holsters and uh, appreciate those of you who have uh, uh, well supported them and have let me know about it I hear uh, lots of you have those and, and like them I don't think I've ever heard anybody uh, you know that didn't like an Alabama holster uh, they uh, no company's perfect but I'm, I'm, I'm sure that the one got through somewhere along the however long they've been in that business but 
but I just don't ever hear anything. You know, like like any any company, you're going to hear problems, customer service or anything like that. But I never hear that with Alabama Holstrom. But anyway, appreciate it. Uh, so, what should I shoot? Well, let's shoot this thing. Okay, this is the BAR 308. Okay, 762 by 51. I've got five more rounds in there. Actually, I jacked one of them out, didn't I? Okay, I just don't like to flash around hot, you know. I, uh, but you all have seen these. You've probably seen the the well. When I say originals, I mean the original uh, sporter version, not the military version, uh, semi-auto. And uh, they they they're just cool guns. They've always been kind of expensive, and so they're not everybody's first choice. I never have been. But people who did buy it, no, they're not crazy. It's not like buying a you know four thousand dollar Seiko or anything, Seiko, Saco, or anything like that. But it never have been, I don't think. But, um, but they're not cheap and they're semi-automatic. Uh, maybe not what everybody's looking for. Uh, I think they had a reputation of not being as accurate as some bolt guns, well, most bolt guns perhaps. Then they went to like a boss system where you screw on the end and adjust it and it adjusts the vibration or whatever. And uh, that really helped with the accuracy, as I understand. Uh, mine, the first one I had, did not have that, but I wasn't you know, going for groups at 200 yards with it. I was just plinking with it like I do with most firearms. But they, they got a little bit of a different look now. Now this one, most of them are not in wood or walnut like this. This, uh, uh, Brazilian walnut? I think it's Brazilian, but anyway, it's walnut. And it's a nice looking one. This one is the one that has the, uh, uh, what do they call it, the detachable box magazine, DBM version. It's got the detachable box magazine, which holds 10 rounds. Uh, most of them have a flush mag, just like the old ones that hold four or five. And what else was there about this one that was a different? Uh, maybe the Picatinny rail. And the shorter barrel, that's right, this has a shorter barrel. Uh, what was it? 18, I think, inches maybe. So instead of 22 or 4 on the standard models, but, uh, but this one appealed to me. I saw it somewhere. Where did I see it? In a gun shop somewhere. And uh, yeah, and uh, uh, that is cool. I didn't know they changed them that much and, uh, and everything. And so it was on my radar. So I went to Bud's and requested one. Pretty cool. Let's shoot the thing. Let's empty that magazine. I don't like having bullets in a magazine, which is another uh, topic here for today. So let's put a round in the chamber. Now this is 308. It's pretty stout. I don't want to shoot Clyde. Clyde's pretty thin-skinned, actually. But I'll shoot uh, a bowling pin and not think twice about it. Okay. Let's see, I've got a bowl, two bowling pins and a two liter there you can see on that one shelf. So what do I need to shoot first? You know the answer. If I shoot the two liter, it'll blow the bowling pins off, right? So you gotta pick your targets. Nice trigger. Got off too soon. I had my hand on that sling attachment there. Kind of hit me there that one time. Okay. Yeah, pretty nice. And I put a, my own pad on it to extend it a little bit. Since it's semi-automatic, it doesn't you know, kick that much for a 308. Uh, so that is just for extent, extension. And it's actually not horrible without it. I shouldered it a little bit and I was putting a scope on and well, see, the scope was fine there, I think. Probably better if I get me a little more length on the stock. And uh, that, that's a pretty good. I saw, uh, I've been doing some research on it, learning about it, trying to learn a little bit about it before we do video on it, and uh, ran across a, a guy on a video talking about, it was, uh, he thought it was a great hog gun. For, I think he was in Texas, maybe. Uh, they were, they bait the, the wild boar, the hogs are such a problem, in those areas. And, and uh, a semi-automatic, and, and anyway, uh, yeah, just whatever, looking for them you might run into one or something but the way they're trying to hunt them and, and get rid of them you know they're varmints and uh uh so they bait them and everything and so whenever it is at night or whatever if they're kind of in a blind or they're waiting for them to come around sometimes there are a lot of them 
and first shot and they start to scatter of course and all that kind of thing and and so with a semi-automatic he was talking about an ideal fire like would be kind of like this semi-automatic you're not going to get a lot of shots but but you've got uh you know 10 or 11 powerful shots you know and so you might get two or three that sort of thing and you know, it's a handy size and length and so i think it would be a, a pretty good haul gun even though i'm not a hunting expert it makes sense to me so i liked the one i had i, I have to say it was it was it was a i always thought it was uh i don't know what's the word i'm looking for just just a classic quality uh firearm it, it always worked it was beautiful beautiful wood and it didn't hold a lot of ammo it was the standard model it had it would hold uh four or five in the magazine and and that kind of thing and just being a plinker and not a hunter it did i i liked it a lot but i was like oh, this would be cool if it would hold 10 rounds or 20 or something uh, the more i thought about it this was back you know a long time ago i thought i was living here and i, I remember distinctly walking my trails and shooting it right there. It seemed like I remember shooting at steel over on a hill in the woods and everything with it. And that would have been around the year 2000 or something uh, or before. And I don't know, I'd seen a Garand or been thinking about a, uh, a Garand. I guess I didn't have a Garand yet, even the first one, I don't know. But the more I thought about it, an M1 Garand made more sense to me at the time. And I thought, well, okay, I've got a, a, a similar firearm, you know, kind of a chunky, powerful firearm, but it holds eight rounds in one Garand, and that gun just held four or five. And so if I'm going to have a rifle that just holds that many rounds, maybe I would just soon have a historical firearm. <laughs> it was something like that. And uh, so I, I didn't, I even had one or owned one for a long time. But it's probably no surprise to you. I have owned one. <laughs> this is not my first one. I, I, I kind of like this one. I have to say, it comes in a composite, uh, uh, you know, stock and furniture as well. Uh, if you're going to be out beating it up and all that kind of thing, might make sense. So yeah, ten rounds of uh, 308. Not bad. Am I recording? Yeah, good thing. So I'll load that mag here a little bit. Ugh. A few more shots. Uh -oh. Yeah, I got this scope is a uh, it's one I bought just to move around for when I needed to or wanted to. It's a three and a half by ten uh, loophole. No, it's a oh, you know the burst is the mount. It's a loophole scope. It's a it's a pretty nice one. Yeah, here it is. It's the loophole uh, VX thirty one, three point five to ten by forty millimeter. Okay, so I think I've had that question asked of me before, and I, I couldn't even tell you from memory what I had. Like I say, I'm not an optics expert. I just wanted a decent one there to, to move around and use on different things. So anyway, appreciate everybody else helps us. Talon grips and ballast stall, gun fun targets, uh, you name it. So uh, uh, I think there was something else I wanted to tell you all, but I don't know what it was. Uh, probably nothing important. Uh, while well, I'm loading this mag, let me give you, you young people some advice. Uh, try not to, uh, which way are we going? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, try not to procrastinate too much. Uh, if you have a problem with procrastination, uh, you know, otherwise known as putting things off, it's, uh, I think I talked about that in a talks video, but uh, to some extent, how, how little things make such a big difference in the course of your life, how it goes, where you end up living, what you do for a living, friends you meet, whatever, who you get married to, if you get married, it's just everything, cars you buy, whatever you do, your job, just little things, you know, you, you put off a, uh, something brought this to mind. I was uh, things that I almost didn't do, 
you know, but then I did. Some of it's procrastination, some of it's not necessarily procrastination, it's just you're not sure, well, eh, should I do that or not? Or, you know, the, the, the Davy Colts comes to mind that I, uh, I called Colt about and uh, got the consecutive serial numbers for, for myself, for John and, and, and my grandson. And, you know, when, before he was born, you know, it was kind of an idea. I wanted to get something, a knife, or something in three of them, one for each of us, each generation, and have it engraved, or that'd be cool, whatever it was. I wasn't sure what it would be. I was like, well, what should it be? A, it, and uh, then I got to think about guns. Yeah, it'd be cool to have consecutive serial numbers, wouldn't it? Or something engraved on each one, or like, like the night. I just wasn't sure. And then I had the idea of a you know, cult single action. Wouldn't that be cool? It'd be expensive. They probably won't even do that. You know, I've heard of a lot of guns I mean, having two, a, a pair in consecutive serial numbers, you know, so I, and I thought it was getting closer and closer and I wanted to get it done or order it and do something uh, before he was born, get started on that. And uh, I I almost called Colt, checked with them for it. Nah, they're not gonna do that. Plus it'd be real expensive. Said, nah, they wouldn't do that. Maybe two or something. I, they, who knows, hard enough to find one of those things, you know? Cold single action has been for a long time, you know. But then one day I was out of the barn and I just made the call. I said, well, let me call and get that out of my head so I can go ahead because I need to do something here and go ahead and get the knives or whatever I'm going to do or less expensive guns or something if I can find it and uh, check with other companies. And uh, so I just, I don't know where I got the number, but, but I called their customer service, I guess it was, I thought, and, and uh, got patched into whatever the custom shop or something and and uh and one got them on the phone and just and ask them I said do you guys do is it possible to get three cold single actions made or or do you have them you know consecutive or whatever and uh I said, yep we're gonna do that <laughs> you know so oh, okay sorry i asked <laughs> uh what's that gonna cost but uh of course I go, i'm glad i did now i made that call and uh, and uh, and it wasn't just because of uh, YouTube, even though they recognized my voice when I talked to them, you know, and that didn't hurt. But but they did they do that, you know, and they uh, I put them on the project, you know. I forget I you now I got the grips from Eagle Grips uh, and uh, Raj over at Eagle Grips, you know. I bought uh, three sets of the Sandbar Stag he had. And, and they got them over to Colt for me and they put those on because uh, they, they grind them down, sand them down with the uh, the grips, you know, the, the frame and everything. And uh, so anyway, that's, that's like 2016 now. That's that eight years now, coming up on nine years ago. And those firearms that I've enjoyed, and John's enjoyed, and my grandson will enjoy, hopefully, and wrote that, they wouldn't exist, you know, if I, I almost didn't make the call. You know, there's just so many things like that. We almost didn't look at this piece of property. We, you know, my wife and I were looking at property when we got married and soon after, and we almost didn't come out here, so they're a little far out, you know, maybe and all that. And then, but then we came here and liked it and the land and, and you know, buying it and almost never saw it, you know. So, so you never know, and I mean, all of you have lots of examples like that. Uh, it's just, I'll tell you another one, speaking of guns, I, uh, I, uh, my Model 29, I've had 50 years. They were almost impossible to find, you know, even in 74. And I wasn't going to go to the gun show. I, I don't know why, I was just, I don't know, Saturday morning I was I was in a bad mood or something. I remember not wanting to get out or I don't know, the gun show or I don't know. My wife talked me into it and uh, dragged, me, dragged me off the couch. Come on, let's go to the gun show. And we did. And that's where I found my my model 29 almost didn't go really came very close to not going to that gun show and i it would have been gone i wouldn't have found it so so little things make a difference doesn't it don't they okay i'm gonna shoot this thing all right b-a-r browning let's whack him in safety off okay 308 Keep my hand away from that knob.
Can't miss with it, I'll have to say. Can't miss. Couldn't have said that. I probably will now. Better do a little bowling before I do. No, let's shoot that green two liter standing up high. Yeah. Well, that reminds me. You know, that first uh, two liter I shot, while the music was playing, did you see it come back at me? It literally hit me on the foot. I'm not gonna move, I'm not taking a step, as you see. And there it is. It came from, and that is, uh, I don't know, uh, that first post, uh, I shot it right. That is, uh, well, that one just came back to a pretty good ways in front of that post. But uh, that is uh, at least 10 yards, 12 yards or something. That thing came back, straight back to my foot. Okay, just another illustration. Whenever you see footage or you read about assassinations and things like that, uh, and uh, there's a lot written conjecture about angle of the bullet based on the reaction of the target, as in Kennedy assassination, whatever it is. And I, you know, I'm not reaching any conclusions on anything. I'm just saying that uh, when you shoot something like that, you get weird reactions, okay? Most of you know that. You've, You've done that enough, shot watermelons or, or uh, two liters or jugs of water, and uh, they don't just go the other direction, do they? They don't just, because you're shooting from this direction, doesn't mean they're gonna go that way. They can do some really strange things. We've, we've shot a few two liters in our day, right? You've seen a lot of them, and I can recall lots of uh, oddball reactions, really kind of interesting. Uh, yep, <laughs> they, they do. Gosh, uh, I brought this out. Should I shoot it and get it dirty? Are y'all worth it? Do you care? You know what this is? This is my model 13 FBI gun, 357 Magnum. Yeah, many of you would like to own one of these. I know you, <laughs> I can feel the envy out there because I felt the envy for a lot of years. I've wanted one of these. If you like revolvers, if you like 357 Magnums, uh, you like K-frames, you just cannot uh, not like this this pistol, this revolver. It, it's this little three inch heavy bull barrel. Uh, open her up again and show you the barrel, how thick it is, the bull barrel, three inch, uh, the one the FBI carried for, I guess, almost a decade. Uh, so, Pretty, pretty cool, and I think I'll just shoot it. Yeah, might as well. I'll shoot 357 mags in it. Yeah. Wonderful little revolver. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. So. Six shooter. It holds six. You all knew that. Okay, this one John got me. And we've not shot the target today, paper target, have we? Get my ears in tight. It's a Magnum. Boy, look at that accuracy. Look at that accuracy. Yeah, look at that, the same hole. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Right in the center of that target. Not bad, huh? Yeah, it's got a nice sight picture. You know, it's just, uh, you know, no adjustable sights or anything, of course. I just put a little white uh, paint on that front, and that's enough. That's enough. It jumps out at me. It really does. That, uh, what I like about that, you know, there's a little bit of history in that it was carried by the FBI, that this, this configuration, that always is, is interesting, uh, whether we trust the FBI anymore or not, at least the upper levels of it, uh, what uh, federal agencies or the military, uh, large police departments uh, uh, decide as, as their firearm carries some weight. It just does, you know, it should, because they go through a lot of testing and evaluation. They have to think it through, uh, uh, do some testing and all that kind of thing. So it doesn't mean they always choose the best firearm, does it? Uh, you've got budget issues and all that kind of thing, training issues. 
but they're generally going to choose a pretty good firearm. Yeah, they're they're usually not making like massive errors in one way or the other. That that normally does not happen. Uh, but sometimes, you know, it, it comes down when you get down to the whatever the the finalists. Sometimes, especially there are politics and involved, uh, cost of parts, and yeah, got all that kind of thing. Availability of replacement parts, modularity, you know, all that sort of thing. So, so uh, while usually horrible decisions are not made, still there could possibly be a the best gun not not chosen excuse me maybe not chosen you know because uh, it's a little more expensive or there's politics involved that kind of thing uh, so you know you could argue that you know, there's a lot of that goes on like with the military in the last selection what i think it came down didn't it to the sig you know the m17 m18 or the glock uh, 19x essentially or came down to, to kind of that I think those were weren't they the the finalists pretty much um, and in Glock being the way they are uh, you know it, I, I don't know I forget I've read through about some of that I forget what the exact uh, problems were I know in the past uh, our military maybe other militaries they wanted to do something to the pistol or something different uh, and they, eh, nah, we're not going to do that. You know, we, we'd like to have this hundred million dollar contract, but nah, we don't want to do that or whatever. They don't care. They're selling more of them than they can make it already anyway. You know, and in in two militaries around the world, but uh, so they definitely don't have a reputation of uh, bowing to the wishes of the U.S. military. Never have, but uh, but I don't know. Who knows? It. Uh, it's kind of who you know and, and all those same modularity and just whatever is the priority and of course the military or police department it could be often there are people within that department the higher ups the people with authority power uh the ones who can sign off and everything um they may have it set in their mind which way they want to go kind of ahead of time and so they write up the specs that they know uh, would uh, would uh, would eliminate some company they don't want to get that contract to or whatever you know. And they write the specs for a specific gun. It sounds like they're writing it for a, a specific gun, and sure enough, that's the one they adopt. You know, whatever. So you got all that going on. If you got people, guess what? You got politics. Yeah. And if you got people. You got imperfect people, right? Except for me, of course. So let me shoot this revolver again. And since I got it dirty, I knew y'all wanted to see it get dirty and get shot. I, I, I really don't have a firearm that just feels better in the hand. Uh, you know, the sights are on, thankfully. And it's it's just a cool little, well, you know I like it. I brag on that Model 65 all the time. And it's the same firearm, except I shaved the hammer off of it, and the, or the spur of the hammer. These are magnum rounds, 158 grain. Okay. So, fire off a couple of these before I run y'all out of here. Oh, cowboy. Oh, I can shoot Clyde with these, can't I? All right, Clyde. I might have missed, did I? Oh, that's all right, man. How about you, cowboy? That's pretty bad. I missed that plate on the last shot. That means I need one more bullet so I don't quit on a miss. All right. On the same target, double action. Well, I guess I need to relearn the difference between a Colt and a Smith & Wesson, don't I? Been shooting too many Colts lately. <laughs> and you all know what I mean by that. The cylinder turns clockwise with a Colt. You got one round. 
you're going to put in there. Here's an empty I'll put in. On a Colt, if you need one bullet pretty quickly, you better get it up in that area. Get him to where he'll come up when you pull the trigger. That would have fired if that was a live round. But if it's a Smith & Wesson, it needs to be over there, doesn't it? So when it spins this direction, okay. I've shown you all that in many videos. Some of you have rudely missed some of our videos. Uh, and that's what you get. You don't know what I'm talking about sometime because you have missed some. Worse than that, you've not gone back and done your homework and made up for your sins of omission. Yeah, you should be spending every waking hour scouring the channel, making sure you have seen every video. Yep, I'm really disappointed some of you don't do that. But <laughs> all humor aside, yeah, really, uh, wow, I was listening to a guy talking finance or something just this morning on a YouTube video and uh, he was, you know, begging his people to make sure they're subscribed. He's hearing from all of them, so many of them, that uh, they're uh, getting unsubscribed and all that kind of thing, you know, the usual stuff. Wow. Even in financial videos, you know, but we know that's going on in gun videos. Uh, it's a constant stream. So, yeah, make sure you're subscribed and you're checking back on your new can. Uh, because, man, we really are fighting the algorithm, no doubt about it. So, and everything's on Rumble. And I noticed a lot of you on the Sunday videos are going over there. I don't know if they're featuring them or something, but uh, we get more views, I think, on Rumble on a Sunday video than uh, on YouTube. So, thanks over there at Rumble. Uh, again, we don't care where people watch us make fools of ourselves, as long as you watch us, yeah. So, tune in, and uh, here we go. Oh, one last thing. i got to reveal my idiocy. I got, oh, I got some, I, I, I don't know, I was at the, what was it, Mag Warehouse or somewhere. I was, I was buying some magazines and uh, ordered some Lancers, you know, uh, a couple weeks ago. And uh, I've never had these perfectly clear ones. Yeah, yeah it's cool. I got some of those. I got ordered 10 of those. Okay. I was going to load one up yesterday. You know what's coming. You can look at it and tell, can't you? So I get in, you know, several in there, and then I can't get any more in. So what's going on here? I, I looked at, at the, and I started to be suspicious. And I looked, how many do I have in there? Two, four, I could look down there and say, yeah, I got 10 in there. <gasps> the 10 round magazine. And, uh, called the 1030 or something so by mistake 10 and I, I tried I couldn't get the bottom off I think they're made so you can't you can't get that spacer out of there I think but does anybody have any experience with that let me know uh, yeah I have no use for that at all I mean if I'm gonna have a 10 round magazine for some fire I want it to be like this one you have some advantage you have a shorter mag yeah you know, uh, I don't want it. 30 round magazine holds 10, duh. So I don't know, I, I worked on it, worked on the one I had open, this one I had open, and I couldn't uh, I couldn't get the floor plate off. I pushed it, I didn't mess with it, mess with it, pounded it, and did everything but get a hammer out, which might be the next step. Uh, so man, I have nobody to blame but myself. I, I, I just, I don't know, I guess I just didn't think about an actual 30 round mag uh, having a space around so it just holds 10 and that maybe you can't even fix it. I don't know. I just, I, I have ordered magazines that are shorter right, for my 300 blackouts and things. I, I'll intentionally have some 10 round mags uh, and uh, 30 round mags, 20 round mags, that kind of thing. But I didn't, I don't know, I just wasn't thinking. So wasted all that money. Uh, if I can't get them fixed, I'll just give them to somebody. I don't know who'd want them. <laughs> California's pretty far away. So I, I don't know who'd want them around here. We live in uh, uh, more or less free country around here in Tennessee and Kentucky and the, the South, you know, where something like that's pretty much an aberration, you know. It just, just really is. Wow. Mm. Ah, what an aberration. <laughs> an abomination. So I'll let you go on that happy note.
So uh, anyway, glad you came out today. And uh, I will, uh, I'm a little early this week. Uh, uh, I'll be back by the time you see me again, but uh, going out uh, for a few days to Chattanooga and around, yeah. And uh, I'll be back though by the time you see this. So it's like I didn't even leave, right? Kind of like magic. Life is good. <laughs>